Today we're going to look at the Auspig Traveller Edition, and I'm going to tell you what I think after using it for two years. So this is the Auspig Traveller, and it's different to the regular Auspig in that it's kind of more cylindrical in shape. And what that does is it means that it's less sort of height to it, making it a little bit easier to pack, but it also gives you a larger cooking surface. This is the standard cooktop here, and this is the optional grill that we've purchased. And if you are to get one of these, spoiler alert, you need to pay the extra to get the grill top there as well. We've got a couple of other options on it. One of the options is this door here. This is not standard, this is an extra. I think it's about $60. Nothing's cheap with these Auspigs, I'll give you the tip. And this allows you to adjust the ventilation for cooking. Let me just say, show you from this side. There you go. So it allows you to regulate the temperature a little bit more accurately when you're trying to cook with the Auspig. The standard door is just completely sealed and you regulate the airflow by just opening or closing the door. The other option that we've got is we bought the offset flue for it and you can see how that works. One thing it does is gives us a little bit extra height to take the smoke further away. But the other thing that it does is it means that we can put the Auspig underneath the awning of the vehicle or the caravan when it's raining and we can still have our fire, which is really, really cool. And of course, the other one you can see here is the, well, it's kind of like a wetback on a fire, but it's just sort of a billy that is attached with these uh, quick release clips here. It hooks around the flute and it kind of sits on here, which is kind of nice, but it actually takes up quite a bit of real estate for your cooking area, which, you know, you're kind of limited with on these small fires anyway. The other thing is, this is really expensive. It's like a hundred bucks to buy, but it does allow you to put both water in there, but you can also put food in there. So you can put like a soup or um, rice or pasta or something in there and boil that up. We bought this when we didn't have the caravan because if you've seen uh, any of the videos on our Patreon, you'd know that Mella really, really likes her hot water bottles and she's forever changing them over. And so this allowed us to just keep some water on the boil all the time. We'd even run two hot water bottles. When one got cold, we could tip it into here and recycle the water and then uh, you know just keep rotating through. So. That's a really, really cool idea. Now, we have used this thing a lot, and you can see that it is showing signs of use. What I do do with this is I actually spray it with just cheap Coles canola oil. It's about a dollar eighty a can, and I just actually spray paint it when I'm finished using it. And I do the same thing with all of my cast iron cookware, and you'd be amazed how good it comes up, and it just looks like brand new. Now, this is starting to get a little bit of rust here, but that's because we've been using it a heap. But even once this is sprayed over, it's gonna look really good. You can sort of see, because this door is not closed a lot of the time, it hasn't actually burnt off this edge here. See how it goes black like that? That's just the oil. That's all that is, that's not paint. The paint on this thing has been burnt off many, many times ago. We get this thing glowing absolutely cheery red, which I'm sure it's probably not supposed to, but it, it handles it quite well. The only thing that we did have to do was this fire grate in the bottom here. This is the second one that we've bought. We've had to buy a replacement. I think it was 20 or $30. And it's actually not as thick as the original one was. We got it direct from Auspig because I couldn't find one in the shops anywhere. Oh, that's yucks. So that's the only thing that's happened with this really was that that had just totally burned through and it was quite thick, but that's how hot we get this thing on a regular basis. Now, what's really cool about the Auspigs, even with all of these extras, bar this hot water system here, everything packs up inside of here. The whole thing packs away the legs, even with the extended flue, even with this extra um, great here we get everything including the the handle here the whole lot goes inside and then it's got its own little carry bag which we can then store in the back of the car or in the caravan or wherever and that's really cool in fact it packs up so small 
even with the draw system in the back of the Land Cruiser, which is a touring draw system with a 100-litre fridge there and two stacked drawers, on top of there we got the Ozpig, the Yamaha generator and a Thetford toilet uh, with room to spare. So it really does pack up quite small. That being said, it's quite heavy. So, the pros. What's good about it? Man, this thing cooks the best steak. Like, it is insane how good the steak is. If you get it right, get that really nice and hot, put a couple of bits of fresh wood on just to get a bit of smoke coming through the grill and then stick your steak on there. Holy hell, that is just absolutely brilliant. It cooks everything really well, and we use it for even just putting pots and pans on. Really, really cool. If you love cooking, that is actually just awesome. Well, I've even cooked damper inside of it. I've actually wrapped damper up, um, got it cold up, and then put the damper inside of the um, fire pit part of it and actually done a damper in there, and it's been really, really good. So, look, as far as the cooking side of things go, you cannot beat this thing. It is also excellent because you can close it up, shut it down. It's even got a spark arrestor on top, and you can um, shut your fire down when you go to bed, and you're not worried about you know starting a bushfire because it's closed up and it's all contained and you know stored away. There's been a couple of instances when we've been up in the wheat belt and it's fire season technically, but there's still dry grass around and it's been blowing a gale and you know it's cold. We want a fire, but you know bit concerned about lighting a fire and having it whipped through the grass well we rip this out of the van and we can light that up we can all sit around it and it works really good the other thing is you can take the top off and you can just have the wood sticking out make quite a big fire you can have four or five people around there if it's not windy as soon as it gets windy it, it's obviously not as effective but most fires aren't very effective if the wind's blowing right through you so you can light the fire by just sticking your wood in the top here and and i do that quite a bit and then you can put the top on when you want to cook. You can just leave the top off and have wood sticking out and have it really cranking if it's a cold night and you're not cooking. The water heater is really cool. Um, we don't really use it much now that we've got the caravan, so it's a bit of a waste of money for us. If you do a lot of camping and you, you want to do cooking in there or you do use a lot of hot water for whatever reason, um, you know, you've got hot water bottles or you, you like your tea or coffee, it's actually pretty cool. It's a really neat idea, even if it is a little bit expensive. The fact that it all packs up into that one neat little package is really cool. It's really cleverly designed, and you really didn't, you don't think, even when you're packing it up every time, you think, I don't know how this is all going to fit in there. I've done it wrong. But no, it does. It actually all goes in there, and that's sensational. It's good that it's got a little carry bag, but we'll go into that in the downsides as well. So what don't I like about the Ozpig? Well, for a start, these legs here are complete pain in the neck to get on and off. They get all grit in them, and especially because I do oil it, it burns into the threads, you get sand in there, you can't get them out. In fact, to get these legs in and out every time I want to pack it up or put it away, I have to use a pair of vice grips just to unscrew them. There's actually no way to get a good purchase on these legs and they seize in there when it's been really, really hot. Sometimes I've even had to get the, the map gas out and actually heat them up to get them out. And that's obviously a pain when you're out camping and you just want to put it away. You know, all of the extras and accessories are really awesome, but they really do sting you for them. I mean, this whole setup's cost me nearly 500 bucks, I'd say, and that's a lot of money for a little fireplace. So um, there's a lot of cheaper alternatives out there. And granted, they don't offer the same sort of system that these do, not with the entirety of, of what you get, but, you know, some of them are pretty close. So that's obviously a problem as well. The door is kind of average. The hinges bend easy and... Um, it doesn't really seal very good, which I don't think it's supposed to, but it's okay, it's fine, it works, but I don't know, it just feels like it could be better. Again, this is probably my own doing, but some of these sections of flue can be really, really hard to get apart once they've been really hot, and that's 
probably due to both rust, creosol from the fire, but also because I've oiled them as well. Sometimes I'd have to heat them up to get them apart or really slap them really heavily against a rock or something to try and get them to break apart. And of course, the other downside is that it's really heavy. I mean, it packs up really small, but that doesn't take the weight out of it. I'm going to weigh it actually, and um, I'll overlay that on this video here when it's sitting on the scales once I've packed it up so you can see how much it weighs. I'm not sure what it would be, but uh, if it wasn't 20 kilos, I'd be surprised. Maybe it won't be, but pretty sure it would be 20 kilos. But anyway, the other thing that I don't like is the bag. I mean, the bag's great and the handles are really good and it's been really hard wearing and it does soak up the oil and it doesn't seem to leak it out anywhere. So that's really good. But why didn't you put a top on it? Why didn't you put a zip up top on there so that, you know, you can put stuff on top of it without it getting filthy dirty from all of this soot and ash and crap? So I normally just put a rag over the top and that sort of works, but geez, it would have been nice to just have some kind of strap that goes over the top or some kind of zip and you could actually put a, a cover over the top of it. I don't understand why you wouldn't do that. So that's probably one of the things that really bugs me. Next to the legs, that's the second most annoying thing about it. The last thing that is a little disappointing is, as much as I love this, it's a pain in the neck to store. This flap keeps opening up all the time. Uh, this tap doesn't have any way to kind of store it without physically removing it or having the threat of it being snapped off or broken off. So if there was just a way that you could tuck that away easily or a quick release fitting or something, uh, would make that much easier to store because that's actually a really difficult thing to pack. Um, and if it wasn't so hard to pack, I'd probably actually take it with us more often and use it more often, but it's just a bit of a pain in the neck. So would I buy one again? Hmm, that's interesting. We're renting here at this place and there's not, any way that I can have a fire in the backyard. We love our fires in the backyard in the winter. So we use this all the time. Sometimes we use it four or five nights in a week at home. So for me right now, taking it away camping is tolerable because we use it at home as well. The expense is kind of worthwhile because we use it at home and we use it camping. If I wasn't using it at home, now that we have the caravan, I don't know if I'd buy it again i'm not sure what i would get maybe a cheaper version of this like like a king's one or something or maybe i would just get one of those stainless fire pits but then you can't cook on them so i don't know i love cooking on this i would miss that if i didn't have it but i could live without it so at the moment i'm happy i bought it because i use it all the time at home as well if i wasn't going to use it at home and i had a fireplace already in my backyard uh that's a lot of money and a lot of fiddling around with those legs all of the time i don't know why they didn't put some kind of folding legs or quick release legs or something you know like a neato air fitting or something where you could just pop them off that would have made so much more sense than than these screw in legs that don't have any way to grab a hold of them to unscrew them i don't know tell me what you think for 500 bucks you can buy a lot of different types of fireplaces for camping um and granted you know those stainless fire pits you can't shut them down you can't close them off when you go to bed but you know they probably burn out pretty quick too tell you what leave a comment below what do you think is better do you think this is better than an open fire pit than one of those stainless style fire pits or do you think that stainless fire pit has, has got it all over this thing here? Is $500 too much for a setup like that? They're $350 just by themselves, about $500 with all the accessories I've got. Or do you think that's a ripoff? Let us know in the comments below. I'll be really interested to see what you say. And thanks for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate it. And just remember that we do have our Patreon now. If you want to sign up, the first 20 people get it for $1.50 a month. Um, that's half price for as long as you stay a member of our Patreon. If you don't want to do that, that's fine too. But do us a favor, hit the like button, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much, everyone. I'll see you next time.